okay so good evening today i'm going to explain the qualitative analysis that we have done in the lab so the uh, learning standard that you need to know is to identify the cation and anion present in the salt and also describe the conformatory test to identify the cation and an anion now when you get a salt first thing you need to observe the physical properties okay physical properties here is referring to uh, number one the color all right so this is referring to the color all right now besides the color you need to find out whether the salt is soluble in water so the solubility okay so these two are the important part in observing a salt because when you are giving a salt uh, you don't know whether it's soluble or insoluble now why is it important is because solubility depends on uh, number one the anion so the anion that is soluble that means what salt with the anion that is soluble in water is all nitrate salt is soluble in water this one you must bear in mind lah, keep in mind all right so the possibility if it's a soluble salt there are many possibility lah, right so it could be nitrate salt it could be the potassium salt it could be the sodium salt it could be the ammonium salt so these are the possibility now it can be um sulfate salt also all right or chloride salt also all right so these are the possibility of the salt now next you go to effects of heat so this one will depend on what gas is released lah. so this one will depend on the observation you get then this is the part where the test is done the confirm uh, test for anions and cation important anions what are four important anions that you need to identify okay number one is the nitrate ion all right number two is the sulfate ion right number three the carbonate ion and of course the chloride ion so these are the four um, anions that need to be tested lah all right now for each one of the ion the test done is different now you have the test for carbonate so if it's a carbonate salt of course you will use lime water so basically if let's say you heat the salt and the lime water thing turns chalky so that means there's presence of carbonate salt now chloride salt to identify the chloride salt is all right you need to use nitric acid okay add to the salt all right and then after that you add sulfur nitrate uh, sorry silver nitrate now the reason why you add silver nitrate is uh, basically if let's say it's a chloride salt then you will get a white precipitate which is silver chloride so silver chloride is a white precipitate now for sulfate ion the acid added is hydrochloric acid all right followed by barium chloride now chloride and sulfate test the only difference is the acid and of course what is the solution you add so the reason why you add uh, barium chloride is because if there's a presence of sulfate salt you will get barium sulfate so barium sulfate is a white precipitate so white precipitate presence of white precipitate indicates the presence of sulfate salt now lastly you have uh, nitrate now nitrate is what we call as a brown ring test now in order for you to do this test you need to add sulfuric acid the solution all right followed by iron 2 sulfate and then at the end the number three you add a concentrated of sulfuric acid 
so these are actually the solution added lah all right okay then we go to the questions what was the gas release that causes the eversenses so this eversense is referring to the gas bubbles so what is the gas release so this is carbon dioxide okay number two name the white precipitate form in the in the test for chloride ion so the white precipitate like i said is because they said name so silver chloride right write the ionic equation for the formation of precipitate 2a so how do you write the ionic equation is now if you know it's going to form silver chloride so you work backwards silver chloride is formed by silver ion and chloride ion so this is barium sulfate Okay, write the ionic equation so for this you work backward so barium sulfate so what are the ions that form barium sulfate so ba2 plus and so4 2 minus identify the n ions in the following uh, samples so this one depends on all right this one depends on the experiment lah. okay what are the salt uh, and what are the uh, observation for each salt okay then we go to a discussion question what is the purpose of adding excess acid in the test for chloride ion now if we go back to the substance here Okay, so you are able to identify the salt based on the uh, substance like salt A here. Okay, salt A here is actually sodium carbonate. So this of course will be a carbonate salt. Salt B will be a sodium chloride, C sodium sulfate and D sodium nitrate. So of course A will be uh, carbonate salt so we can basically fill up the table here all right so here a is a carbonate salt okay when you go to b okay let's say b will be a chloride salt all right of course this table is filled up through experiment all right and then C is a sulfate salt. Alright, C a sulfate salt. And lastly, nitrate is a D is the nitrate salt. Now, what is the purpose of adding excess acid in the test for chloride ion? Alright, sulfate ion. Now, okay, so the reason why we add acid in both the test for uh, sorry chloride and sulfate is to remove any excess uh, carbonate ions. So we don't want uh, the carbonate ion to interfere with the experiment. So what is the purpose of uh, adding excess acid is to remove any presence of carbonate ions. A student performs a test for the chloride ion in a sample of salt solution. He added the silver nitrate solution without first adding excess uh, nitric acid. He then made inference the presence of chloride ion in the sample when he observed a white precipitate. Was the inference correct and why? 
Okay, so now he wants to test for chloride ion. He added silver nitrate. Alright, without adding um without adding any nitric acid. He then made the inference of the presence of uh, chloride ion. Now, if you do not add any acid and let's say there's presence of uh, carbonate ion. So when there's presence of carbonate ion, all right, it might be the white precipitate is silver carbonate. Now, silver carbonate is an insoluble salt. So was the inference correct? No, uh, because the precipitate could be a carbonate salt which might be silver carbonate so that is the answer all right so was the inference correct no all right so then you explain your words because when nitric acid is not added there could be traces of carbonate ion so the salt could be a carbonate salt which is a insoluble salt Okay, now we go to the next part. Okay, list the cations that produce precipitate which are green, brown, blue and white. Alright, here now we have a table to fill up based on the ion. So the cation here is calcium, magnesium. So what are we testing is the cation basically okay so these are the ions so now when you add small amount of sodium hydroxide solution you need to state what you observe in small amount and of course in excess so excess will be whether there's precipitate soluble in excess now this table can be filled up if you refer to this diagram now this diagram shows that when you add sodium hydroxide all right the possibility of you getting all right white precipitate and whether the white precipitate is soluble all right so if you get white precipitate the white precipitate could be soluble or could be insoluble now colored precipitate is uh, the presence of these three ions lah iron 2 iron 3 and copper ion so these are colored ion now the first part is so let's say you do not get any precipitate all right so if you do not get any precipitate so that will be the presence of uh, ammonium ion okay so small amount of sodium hydroxide this one i put across no change and no change all right now if you have small amount of sodium hydroxide if you refer to the diagram small amount all right so small amount here you will get precipitate okay so this colored precipitate form there's a possibility of no and yes so colored precipitate here okay now we can state the colored precipitate okay so for iron 2 will be green brown all right and blue so in excess okay insoluble 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 so the rest will be white precipitate actually so all this will be white Now one 
you already know all these are the white precipitate so what you need to do next is the okay you follow the chart here so for zinc aluminium and lead the white precipitate is soluble so you need to write zinc aluminium and lead soluble so these two will be insoluble okay now when you go to ammonium okay let's look at ammonium so this is basically what the chart is uh, saying or explaining so three uh, cation that forms soluble white precipitate zinc aluminium and uh, lead so you can remember the word zap okay zap